Hi, I'm Matt Williams and welcome back to Soil Lab. We've been getting a lot of questions lately from homeowners and DIYers that get micronutrient recommendations on their soil tests. And some of these questions are, when I look at these different micronutrient products, why are they priced so differently? And when I look at these micronutrient labels, what is this EDTA and DTPA, what does that even mean? And so we've developed a study here at Soil Lab to help answer just those questions. When we're looking at the labels of these different micronutrient fertilizers, zinc for example, and you see those letters like EDDHA, DTPA, and so on for example, that means that that fertilizer is chelated. The word chelate actually comes from the Greek word that means claw or lobster claw. Well, what's that mean in the soil environment? Let's use zinc for example. Zinc has a plus two charge, so it's a positively charged ion, it's a cation, and that means it has the ability to combine with anions, negatively charged ions in the soil like phosphate, especially in those higher pH soils. What the chelating agent does, it's basically an organic acid that acts like a claw and binds that zinc up so that the phosphate can't. Well, it binds it up in a way that maintains its bioavailability so plants can still absorb it. These chelated products are going to be especially important for your micronutrients in higher pH soils that are at or near neutral or higher. So really pH is above 6.5 or 7.0. The chelation might really help drive that bioavailability. And we've developed this study to show just how that does or doesn't work. If you'd like to learn more about the science behind chelation or more about the element zinc, please check out our blog post. It's linked down in the description below. One other thing that's pretty notable, I think, is that nature really had this chelation figured out far before we ever did. There's a lot of natural chelating agents out there as well, like fulvic acids, humic acids, and even some amino acids. So some species actually will exude from their roots these substances that help to chelate nutrients naturally. We've just harnessed that in fertilizer manufacturing and can chelate those products ahead of time. We hope that this data helps to drive decisions in your lawn and garden. So how do we design this study? Well, similar to the pH study that you may have watched before, we went and harvested a soil. The soil we chose was a medium textured, so a pretty silty soil with a relatively high pH for our region, about 7.4. So it's that basic pH where we would expect zinc availability to be relatively low. And in fact, the zinc levels in the soil we chose were suboptimal. They were below that optimal range when we ran them through our soil test. So we took that soil and we put equal amounts in each of seven different trays. Once we had the equal amounts in each of seven different trays, we chose three different zinc products. We chose zinc sulfate, we chose zinc EDTA, which is a chelated form of zinc, and then we chose zinc with EDTA chelation and IDS, so another uh, chelated micronutrient product. We very carefully uh, calculated the amount needed to deliver two different rates, a low and a high rate. So our low rate was 0.125 or 1 eighth of a pound of zinc per thousand square feet. The higher rate was 0.25 pounds of zinc per thousand square feet. For each rate, we put it into solution in an equal amount of water. And then we use this really cool Rainin precision pipette to deliver that liquid across the soil surface. We did this in a grid pattern to get as equal of a distribution as possible. So we did this for each of our six treatments and we of course left that seventh tray as our untreated control. Now, to keep the playing field level, we did add the same amount of fluid to that, just no zinc to that untreated control that we'd be comparing against uh, down the road. Once we'd applied the zinc to each of our trays, we watered those in with the equivalent of one eighth of an inch of water. Over the next week, we just maintained each of those soils uh, in a field moist manner, and after one week's time, we took our samples. Now, to take the samples, we used a soil probe, and we collected enough soil to do three replications.
So out of each of the seven trays, we ran three soil tests for a total of 21 soil tests to get this data for you. Once we'd collected enough for three soil tests, we sent those to the lab and we used the MySoil Ion Exchange resin capsules to do the soil analysis. Once we received the data back, we compiled it, we ran a statistical analysis, and that's what I'm about to deliver to you. So we compiled all that data from the 21 soil tests. We used three replications for each of the seven treatments, including that untreated control, and we did find some statistical differences, so some really significant differences here, and that's what I want to walk through with you right now. As I look down here uh, at, my, at my chart, I see that our untreated control was below that optimal level. It was at 0.07 parts per million uh, in, in our study. And remember, that's across three trials. This really showed us how well and how accurate these, these resin tests are in determining micronutrient concentrations in the soil. You can see with the zinc sulfate, it was significantly higher than the untreated control. So when we applied the zinc sulfate at one eighth of a pound of zinc per thousand square feet, it certainly did drive that zinc level up and increase our available zinc. But the really interesting thing to me is when we look at that zinc EDTA, that chelated fertilizer, that zinc EDTA and IDS, another, uh, another chelated product, we saw significant jumps in the amount of available zinc. Now, it looks like that's far above the optimal level, well, and that is in fact the case. But with zinc, remember it's a cation, and it's not very mobile in the soil. It doesn't move uh, very far or very rapidly. So if we're a little bit high on our zinc, that's gonna be all right. We're not, we're not at risk of losing it. So what's the takeaway here? Each of our treatments moved zinc levels up. The zinc sulfate at an eighth of a pound per thousand moved it up. The zinc EDTA and IDS, those chelated products, moved it up even more significantly. Now, even though we see the numeric differences between zinc EDTA and zinc EDTA and IDS, those two chelated products, statistically, those were actually the same. So numerically different, but statistically the same. So that's just telling us chelated is good in this case, or chelated increases bioavailability in this case, driving that uh, available zinc level up. Let's go ahead and look at the higher rate of zinc. So our untreated control, again, 0.07 parts per million below that optimal range. When we bumped our rate up to a quarter of a pound of zinc per thousand, a pretty high rate for zinc really, we saw again that significant increase with the zinc sulfate to just above that optimal range. But we really saw those numbers skyrocket or drive up rapidly with those chelated compounds. Now the statistics flushed out the same in this case with the high rate and the low rate, meaning that the zinc sulfate was significantly higher than the control, and both of the chelated products were higher than the zinc sulfate and the control, but not statistically different. So there's a numerically higher uh, amount of zinc that's bioavailable with one of the chelated products versus the other, but the statistics didn't prove out that they were truly uh, different. Just for fun, let's go ahead and look at the comparison of each product in both rates. So again, our untreated control is down here below that optimal level. And you can see that the zinc sulfate did move the needle up. It increased bioavailable zinc. And that at either rate, the amount of bioavailable zinc significantly increased with both of those chelated products. So what else did we learn? Or can we maybe explain a little bit more about what's going on in the soil here? Well, the other thing that I've learned or took away is that these resins very well quantify bioavailable amounts of these micronutrients, zinc in particular in this study. The other thing I wanna remind us is about the soil pH, and then we can talk about why maybe that zinc sulfate wasn't as available as the chelated products. So the pH, remember, is 7.4. So that's a little high. That means zinc availability is gonna be reduced, which is the case in those higher pH soils really above 6.5. Well, why is it less available? Remember in the beginning of the video, we talked about that zinc being tied up by other elements. So where the zinc isn't, right here, it's likely tied up as zinc phosphate. 
And at the pH 7.4, the primary form of phosphate just has one hydrogen hooked to it, so it has a minus two charge. And that zinc has a plus two charge and they end up combining. Go ahead and check that blog post out that I mentioned earlier for more information on the chemistry that's happening in the soil. And remember, soil biology is also at play here, and naturally producing those chelating agents that might drive bioavailability. So in our higher organic matter soils, we tend to see more bioavailable micronutrients such as zinc. So what are some of the main takeaways or what are some of the things I want you to walk away with after looking at this data set and how can this data help drive decisions in your lawn or garden? Well, first off, hopefully we understand that some of these products may cost more than others because they're a chelated product and that does in fact increase their bioavailability in some soils. In this case, that's especially true in these higher pH soils that are above neutral. Maybe the other takeaway is that if you don't spend that extra dollar or two on that product, you're still gonna drive your zinc numbers up. And certainly in all soils, a chelated product might not even be necessary. So which soils is it that, that might not be necessary? That's gonna be our acidic soils with those pHs below 6.5. In that case, a non-chelated product may work just fine. Now, if you're trying to absolutely maximize that zinc availability or your micronutrient availability, taking a two-pronged approach where you use soil applications plus foliar applications of a micronutrient might really drive that. To fully maximize the bioavailability and the zinc uptake for your plants, that blended feeding of feeding both the soil with zinc as well as that foliar application of zinc are gonna drive those numbers up for you in the short term. Remember, in this study, we looked at just a one week time period and we were able to significantly increase that available zinc. Hopefully you find that this data helps drive decisions in your lawn and garden. If you found this video enjoyable, you found this data useful, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the lab again soon.